you beautiful people of the living God. So today's lesson God wants me to teach you is teach your children righteousness without righteousness is death. All right. So in Psalms 11 and 7, for the righteous Lord loves righteousness. So God loves righteousness, people of God. His countenance does behold the upright. So who does God's countenance uphold? Behold the upright. So the people you see God's light shining on is because they're righteous. Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in a way they should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The way God wants you to train up your child is in the ways of righteousness. All right. Why you should teach your children righteousness? Because without righteousness, they won't make it into the kingdom of God. And if you love them, you would want them to live, right? So Matthew 5 and 20, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven, even your children. That is why you have to teach your children righteousness, because if they if their righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And that goes for your children. If their righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. All right. Psalms 23 and 3. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You should be teaching your children the paths of righteousness so they can live. Proverbs 16 and 8. It is a little it. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. Now, if you love your children, you would want them to live, which is why you should teach them righteousness as a parent. You are commanded by God to teach them righteousness. You will be judged if you're disobedient of God's commandment for not teaching your children righteousness so they could live and not die. God does not desire that any should die, but that they should repent and live. But how will you know what to do what to repent from if you are not taught righteousness righteousness needs to be taught as god wants you to teach righteousness of his ways to your children not your own righteousness now righteousness gives you life proverbs 21 and 21 he that follows after righteousness and mercy finds life so when you follow after righteousness and and mercy you find life righteousness and honor he that follows after righteousness and mercy finds its life. So you find life, righteousness, and honor. Proverbs 11 and 19, as righteousness tends to life, so righteousness does what? It tends to life. So he that pursues evil pursues it to his own death. People who are pursuing unrighteousness and evil. Now, Proverbs 12 and 28, in the way of righteousness is life. See? You see these scriptures, righteousness leads to life. So that's why God wants you to teach your children righteousness so they could live. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. God doesn't desire for your children to die. He wants you to teach them righteousness so they could live. Because in the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. Righteousness delivers from death. Now, we're going to go to the scriptures of righteousness delivers from death. Proverbs 10 and 2, treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivers from death. So what does righteousness do for you? It delivers from death. So if you teach your children righteousness and they're, and you train up a child in the way they should go, when they're old, they won't depart from it. If you teach them righteousness, they're not going to depart from it. And guess what? You delivered your child from what? Death. Proverbs 11 and 4, riches profit not in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivers from death. So we have another proverb telling you that riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. So in Proverbs 10 and 2 and Proverbs 11 and 4, it tells us righteousness delivers you from death. Psalms 119 and 144, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. So God's testimonies, they're righteous and they're everlasting. They're not going to change. Give me understanding and I shall live. Righteousness leads to life. You will live if you walk righteously. That's why David said, lead me in the paths of righteousness for thy name's sake. Now, Abraham, the book of Abraham, chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. 
In the land of the Chaldeans, at the residence of my fathers, I, Abraham, saw that it was needful for me to obtain another place of residence. And finding there was greater happiness and peace and rest for me, I sought for the blessing of the fathers and I, and the right whereunto I should be ordained, administer the same, having been myself a follower of righteousness. So what did Abraham tell you? He has been a follower of righteousness desiring also to be one who possess great knowledge and to be a greater follower of righteousness and to possess a greater knowledge, to be a father of many nations, a prince of peace and a desiring to receive instructions and to keep the commandments of God. I became a rightful heir, a high priest holding the right beholding to the fathers. So Abraham told you, he became, remember God's um, sons are princes too. He says, because he was following after righteousness. Now in Psalms 15, very short Psalms explaining righteousness. It's only five precepts in, the, in Psalms 15. And it talks about the ways of righteousness. Psalms 15, a Psalms of David. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? So who's going to be with God? He that walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks truth in his heart. He that backbites not with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honors them that fear the Lord. He that swears to his own hurt and changes not. He that puts not out his money to usury, nor takes reward against the innocent. He that does these things shall never be moved. That's Psalms 15. So that is righteousness. In your eyes, a vile person is condemned in your eyes. You don't put out your money to usury. You don't take rewards and bribes against the innocent. You don't do evil against your neighbor. You're not backbiting with your tongue. You're walking, you're speaking the truth. Those are the people who will be with God. That is work in righteousness, people of God. Now, Romans 10 and 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. Ignorant means to not know. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Proverbs 12 and 17. He that speaks truth shows forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Now, Moses 6 and 23, what does he tell you? He's a preacher of righteousness. But what? In Proverbs 12 and 17, it tells you, He that speaks truth shows forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. Moses 6 and 23, And they were preachers of righteousness, and spake and prophesied and called upon all men everywhere to repent. And faith was taught unto the children of men. Doctrine and Covenants 11 and 13 to 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart unto you of my spirit. This is God talking to his creation. Which shall enlighten your mind, which shall fill your soul with joy. And then you shall know, or by this shall you know, all things whatsoever you desire of me, which are pertaining unto things of righteousness, in faith, believing in me that you shall receive. What did God tell you? He will let you know all things pertaining of righteousness. Let me read this again. And then shall you know, or by this shall you know, all things whatsoever you desire of me, whatsoever you desire of God, what did he say to you? Which are pertaining unto things of righteousness. In faith, you have to believe. Faith is believing without seeing. Believing in me, believing God. That you shall receive. That is what you'll receive from God. If it's righteous and you prayed for it, and you prayed for it in faith, you will receive it. Psalms 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. God's righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is truth. God's law is truth. That's why those who show forth righteousness, they speak the truth. Righteousness gives you peace, okay? Isaiah 32 and 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effects of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Because righteousness tends on to life. James 3 and 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace 
of them that make peace. So righteousness gives you peace and brings you peace. Righteousness brings blessings. Matthew 5 and 6, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. What are they? They're blessed. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Psalms 106 and 3, blessed are they that keep judgment and he that does righteousness at all times. So who's blessed? People who do righteousness at all times. You're accepted with God when you work righteousness. Acts 10 and 35. But in every nation, he that fares him and works righteousness is accepted with him. So for any nation, what God made, that fare him and they work righteousness, they're accepted with God. Psalms 4 and 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness. Doesn't matter what color you are. If you offer unto God the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord, you'll live. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Acts 10 and 35. But in every nation, he that fears him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Psalm 17 and 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. How do you behold God's face? A lot of you people are seeking God, but you're not working righteousness. You're not walking in the paths of righteousness. You behold God's face when you're walking in righteousness. For as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will be satisfied satisfied when I awake with thy likeliness. Doctrine and Covenants 59 and 8. What does God tell you? Thou shalt offer a sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in righteousness. That is why a lot of you guys' prayers haven't been answered because of your unrighteousness. Because what must you do unto the Father? Thou shalt offer a sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in righteousness. Even that of a broken heart and of a contrite spirit. Come before him in repentance and confess all your sins. Sowing righteousness is a sure reward. Proverbs 11 and 18. The wicked works a deceitful work. But to him that sows righteousness shall be a sure reward. So what? Sowing righteousness is a sure reward. Proverbs 11 and 18 tells you that. What are some of the benefits of righteousness? Proverbs 11, I mean Proverbs 13 and 6. Righteousness keeps him that is upright in the way. In what way? In the ways of righteousness, the ways of life, the ways of salvation. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. Isaiah 45 and 8, drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation. What does righteousness bring forth? It brings forth salvation. When the people are walking righteously, God delivers them with salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Proverbs 14 and 34, righteousness exalts a nation. What will exalt a nation? What will exalt a people? When the children of Israel become to be righteous, they will be exalted before my God. But sin is a reproach to any people. Alma 5 and 6 to 21. I say unto you, can you imagine to yourselves that you hear the voice of the Lord saying unto you in that day, come unto me, you bless, for behold, your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth. Or do you imagine to yourselves that you can lie unto the Lord in that day and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth, and that he will save you? Or otherwise, can you imagine yourselves brought before the tribunal of God with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt? Yeah, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness. Yeah, a remembrance that you have set a defiance, have set that defiance, the commandments of God. Train up your child in a way they should go. This is what God wants you to know. Train them up in righteousness. I say unto you, can you look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands and say that you taught your children righteousness? I say unto you, can you look up having the image of God engraven upon your countenance? I say unto you, can you think of being saved when you have yielded yourself to become subjects to the devil? I say unto you, you will know at that day that you cannot be saved. For there can no man be saved except his garments are washed white 
Yeah, his garments must be purified until they are cleansed from all stain through the blood of him who it has been spoken by our fathers, who should come to redeem his people from their sins. Luke 1 and 75, in holiness and in righteousness before him. So how must you must come before God? In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Galatians 3 and 6, even as Abraham believed God, believing God is righteousness. Believing the words of God is righteousness. It was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. Let me read it. Galatians 3 and 6, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Ephesians 4 and 24, and that you have put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness, the new man that you're seeking for, the new man and woman in Christ is created in righteousness and true holiness. What does it tell you? In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. What does it say? And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. 1 John 3 and 7 to 8. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Because people tell lie on the righteous. People not lying on the, the, the unrighteous. The unrighteous are the ones who are lying on the righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For he, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now we're going to read Proverbs 2 and 6 to 12. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keeps the paths of judgment and perverts the ways, preserves the ways of his saints. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. When wisdom enters into thy heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaks forward things. Now, Hebrews 5 and 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Not everybody has the words of righteousness because righteousness needs to be taught. Then shall thou understand righteousness. Righteousness has to be understood. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Complete and perfect in Christ, Emmanuel. Amen.